I'm Eric. And I'm Chad. And this is Mainly Meals. Today's episode, cast iron cleaning. Look at this big old skillet we found. Uh, so I was bumming around up in Helen, Georgia, went in uh, Antique Mall and found this awesome cowboy skillet. Uh, this one was probably produced around the 40s. Uh, so definitely a nice old skillet here. Uh, it's got a couple of rivets holding the handle on. Uh, this one's abnormally large. It's about a 17 inch skillet. Got a relatively long handle on it. Uh, we're going to be going today uh, through the process of cleaning up and reseasoning your cast iron. Uh, this thing's got a good bit of scale and uh, cooked on food particles, rust, corrosion. We're going to go through and try to clean this bad boy up here uh, so we can bring this into some future episodes. Uh, we're definitely going to have to be kind of careful mm -hmm. uh, because this is a relatively thin skillet. This is not like a traditional cast iron skillet that's really, really thick, uh, like a lodge or whatever. So. Uh, we're going to employ some traditional techniques and maybe some not so traditional techniques. Slightly. So this thing's too large to fit in the oven inside. Normally with a cast iron skillet, you could just pop it in the oven on a cleaning cycle and burn most of this crap out of here before you even get started. Since this is so thin, we're going to do it on the green egg outside at a lower temperature because with cast iron, the thinner it is, the more chance you have of warping it, which it already does have some good warps in the base of the pan, mm -hmm. probably from heating it way too hot and then cooling it too quickly. But this thing was probably used on open coals, maybe an open fire, you know, outdoors a good bit. But we're going to bring it back to life and then we're going to cook in it. That's right. Really good stuff. So uh, let's get after it. All right, we're gonna start by taking our cast iron skillet and putting it here in the egg. Now the egg has an induction plate in it and this provides indirect heat. Uh, you do not want this thing on any kind of direct heat that can warp it. And we're gonna turn it upside down and let this thing sit in the egg for probably about an hour. And what that's gonna do is if there's any kind of loose particles, uh, they'll fall off, melt off, permeate out of the metal uh, before we start cleaning on this thing. Okay, so indirect heat for about an hour, we're gonna warm her up. All right, the skillet's been on here about an hour. Uh, I'm gonna retrieve the skillet from the egg. Got these blue fire mitts on. These things are awesome. They're really uh, heavy duty insulated oven mitts. Uh, these are on our uh, Amazon store if you wanna check them out. Very, very useful. You can lift like 400 degree ramekins with these things, no big deal. All right, there's our skillet. All right. All right, we're gonna go to scrubbing. Got her warmed up, make it happen. All right, so we got some pretty bad scale right here on the outside edge and then along one side of the skillet. We're gonna take this drill motor and lightly scrub that crap out of there. You can already see that rust starting to come out of there. That's what you want. Yeah, you can see our rivets uh, showing up a little bit there. Looks like they're still in good shape. Like five rivets are holding the handle on. All right, we've given it a pretty good once over with a wire wheel here. We've got some hot water that we've been keeping hot on the induction burner up there on the porch. I'm just gonna rinse it out a little bit and get some of this nasty rust and junk out of here. Use hot water. You don't want to put cold water in a hot skillet. This thing is still pretty warm. But yeah, we're just going to kind of rinse that around a little bit. Panning for gold, except rust. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we swapped over to some 60 grit sandpaper. 3M, baby. Pro grade precision. Look, it says right there for cast iron restoration. That's probably what that means, right? Maybe, it says 66% less effort. 66% less effort, well, we'll see about that. So I'm just literally just sandpapering the bottom of this skillet and it's gonna take some elbow grease, but we're gonna get it done. Uh, once we get done with this, we're gonna switch to a traditional method to do kind of a final finishing. Uh, it involves salt and a potato. <laughs> Dang, Paul, I'm getting hungry. When are you going to be done cleaning this thing? <laughs> All 
right, you can see we're breaking through more of that pitting, that scale. We're just kind of alternating between some sandpaper, the wire wheel, some hot water, rinsing it out, getting a little slurry going in there. This one definitely taking a little bit longer to get through than just your normal old, like, oh, I haven't used my cast iron in a year and it's got a little rust on it. This is a little bit past that point, boys and girls. But she's cleaning up just fine. Yep, this is worst case scenario, y'all. All right, we're gonna take a little breather for a minute. We've got a little bit of uh, water and vinegar, about a one-to-one -one ratio, just kind of sitting in the pan right now. The vinegar will help eat up a little bit more of that rust in the bottom there. And we still have some pitting that we just can't quite get rid of. So that's just gonna be kind of par for the course. But we will keep pressing on until this sucker is clean. As you can see right here, that uh, vinegar and water solution did help break up a lot more of that rust. Now we're literally just going through with the 60 grit sandpaper and we're trying to get down these high peaks, all this rust and pitting and stuff in here, trying to smooth it back out. This side right here is actually quite smooth. As it sits, it was a little bit more pitting on just one side of the pan. So we're gonna keep uh, giving some elbow grease. What we're going to do, this is an old technique for cleaning cast iron. Uh, there's a bit of pitting and scaling in here, but we got it pretty smooth. We don't want to grind too hard on these uh, rivets, obviously. Now, if this was a thicker piece of cast iron, we could surface grind it. But you see, this thing's real thin, so we got to be real careful. This is an old method. It's take some coarse sea salt. Okay. This is just Morton's uh, coarse sea salt and a potato. Cut the end of the potato off and you're going to get in here use the potato kind of as a, a tool essentially and the salt becomes an abrasive. Okay. Now, uh, I think it goes without saying, we'll probably put a, a footnote earlier on in the video. If you've got a sandblasting chamber and you want to sandblast this thing off instead of, you know, going through this type of effort, you can do that. We're using hand tools because it's, you know, not everybody has access to a sandblasting chamber. All right, we're going to coat this down with a fairly generous, uh, sheen of grapeseed oil. Uh, this is a little bit better for high temperatures. Uh, we've got the oven, or the, in this, this case the grill, uh, set to about 350. So it's going to take, you know, quite a few passes worth of oil and seasoning to get this thing properly seasoned. And you want to go ahead and wipe down the entire surface of the cooking apparatus. So, you know, we've got the, uh, the vessel itself here with a decent coat of oil. And then we're going to oil the back of the pan as well, and then let this sit in the uh, egg for about three or at 350 for about an hour, and then we'll check on it. We'll go through, put a little oil on the back as well. Okay. Is your egg going to blow up? Yeah, uh, <laughs> maybe. This thing actually cleaned up really good considering. So, yeah, looking good. I'm getting a little residue on the cloth. That's okay. You want to put it on the bottom too. Okay, a little oil. Oil the handle, anything that's going to be in there. Okay, it's looking good. All right, and we're gonna put it in the egg, upside down like that, and wait an hour. All right, let's see how we how we did here. Ooh, got some ways to go. Need a lot more oil, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, coat this down with some more grapeseed oil. Lava, rinse, and repeat. Yep. A little bit. Oh, yeah. 
It's going to take a good bit of oil. This thing's real thirsty. Speaking of, I'm a little thirsty myself. <laughs> Some beer in you? We've got an hour to kill. <laughs> That's right, a whole nother hour. It is darkening up a good bit. All right, we're going to invert the pan upside down, back in the grill for another hour. We're going to keep repeating a couple of times till we get a nice season. Okay, it is not the same day as it was before. We are a couple of days in here, but I think we finally reached our finished product here. We've got a beautifully seasoned skillet, and we had a little bit of a learning curve on using the grill uh, to season this bad boy up. We've got a nice seasoning on there. It's looking really, really good. Uh, initially, Chad, I think we were running about 350 degrees. Yeah, so typically like with a conventional oven, I've found running 350 degrees for about an hour at a time and just reapplying the oil or shortening or whatever it is you're using. In this case, we use grapeseed oil. That usually results in a pretty well seasoned skillet. We just weren't getting the heat transfer to the pan in the green egg with that little invection plate that's on the bottom or invector plate that's on the bottom there. So we had to crank that heat up and got it up to about 425, 450 and it started to really work after that and we did three or four iterations, I believe, and the last iteration, we just let the uh, grill cool down on its own, left the pan in there overnight, and this is the final result. Yep, so. Uh, so obviously you would omit that particular step if you were using like an, an oven. You can obviously, if your cast iron will fit in the oven, that's gonna be a much more controllable and better process. Uh, this is a bit of an outlier mm -hmm. situation because this is such a large piece of cast iron. It's a big one. Uh, now, the best thing that we could probably do with this is cook some really fatty stuff, like some ground beef mm -hmm. or some bacon mm -hmm. or something, or fry up yeah. some uh, chicken or fry something. Fry some chicken in it. That's about the first thing everybody tells you to do is fry some chicken in yeah, it. Yeah, so we are gonna be using this cowboy skillet in a bunch of different videos. And we're also gonna be making one of the largest Swedish torches you've ever seen. So stay tuned for that. Uh, guys, we hope you enjoyed this particular episode of Manly Meals. This has been Cast Iron Restoration 101. Uh, it is not for the faint of heart. It does take a lot of work, but uh, the payoff is beautiful. I'm hungry. All right, have a good one, guys. <laughs> See you on Manly Meals next time.